should stand for the bride and bride. from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hill. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks. He says to me, Arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and you are lovely. My lover belongs to me, and I to him. He says to me, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm, for stern as love, for stern as death is love, relentless as the netherworld is devotion, its flames are blazing fire. Deep waters cannot quench love, nor floods sweep it away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please open your hymnals to number 86 and join in proclaiming our song response, Blessed are those who love you. Number 86 in your hymnals. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say, say it again. Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Of the Lord be with you and with your spirit. This is the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, None of those who cry out, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Anyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on rock. When the rainy season set in, the torrents came, and the winds blew and buffeted his house. It did not collapse. It had been solidly set on rock. And for our salvation, the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And with the exception of Hannah, Alex, let the rest of the community be seated. Getting the famous deer in the headlight book from both Alex and I'm going to turn the chairs around yeah. just because I want everybody to see your faces and because I want, I want to see if I get a right name. I want, is it, is it um, Elizabeth? Who's, what's your name then? Lauren. I love when Lauren comes out and keeps fussing with, <laughs> with, with the dress. So I want her to her fussing. Please, Lauren, would you please fuss for us? <laughs> Make sure it's everything is just perfectly without a wrinkle. Because <laughs> as soon as you get it set, I'm going to have a move again. <laughs> just my mean spirited person that I am. I think she's not, she's not quite satisfied yet. Everything's got to be just right. Just, just right. so. We're good. Are we good? We're good. Okay. Would you get up? <laughs> I oh, once again, a warm word of welcome to each and every one of you. Uh, uh, I love coming to St. John's, and I love coming to uh, St. Martha, and, and not Martha, and Mary, Mary and Joseph Chapel, uh, because this was originally a seminary, and I went to school here, as did most of the priests of the Archdiocese of Detroit, and most of the priests who serve in the state of Michigan, and the chapel is designed so that we as seminarians could come to pray in the morning for morning prayer, around noontime for mass, and in the evening for evening prayer. And part of the morning and evening prayer is the responsorial psalms that were either sung or said antiphonally one side to the next. And it worked out well when it was a seminary. But it even works out better now that it's used for a wedding chapel. Because the brides love this wide aisle. And the brides love the fact that everybody can look at them. And the moment they walk through the door with their father and make their way up to their intended husband. And I love the chapel because you get to see each other. That's why I always turn the bride and the groom around. So you get to look at each other, but more importantly, you get to look at their faces. And they get to look at who's present in the chapel. You know, when we receive an invitation for a wedding, we should really consider it to be an honor. Usually what happens is that a young man and young woman meet. They fall in love. They announce their engagement. They go to their parents and to their families, and they say, we're engaged, and they show the ring. And there's hugs, and there's kisses, and there's great joy and happiness. And then the planning begins. They have to figure out, well, what kind of wedding do we want? And then the reality sets in. What kind of wedding can we afford? <laughs> Weddings are multi-million dollar businesses, and in the United States especially. And so I always have to remind people when you're in the chapel here at, at St. Mary and Joseph, and throughout the afternoon and evening, at the cocktail hour and the reception, Take a good look at each other and recognize and realize how special you are. You made the cut. You're on the A-list. There might be a B-list to the C-list, but you are the A-list people. And not only did you, did you receive the invitation, you accepted the invitation. Not only to party with them, that'll happen a little later. 
this afternoon and evening. But you came to the chapel, and by coming to the chapel, you take on a responsibility and an obligation. We're here to pray for them. That's what I want you to do. We may have different faiths represented. We may have people who belong to different congregations. It really doesn't matter. We all believe in God. And we all can pray to God. And I want each and every one of you. We'll be in, in the chapel here for another maybe 15 minutes. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, I want each and every one of you to speak to the God you believe in, in the silence of your heart. And ask the God that you believe in look with kindness on Hannah and Alice, not only in a few minutes as they stand before you, before God, pledging their love to each other, but as they live out that commitment, they're going to say to each other, I want you to be my spouse in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Those are beautiful words, but those words have great meaning. We don't know what the future is going to bring in any of our lives. But I do believe in the power of prayer. And I believe that there are approximately 193 people in this chapel this afternoon. Think of the power. Think of the blessings of 193 or more people who have been asked to pray for our bride and groom. And God will hear our prayer, and God will help Alex and Hannah as they live out that commitment, day in and day out, from this day forward. I know from their perspective, now I'm turning the chairs around and looking at all of you, they're honored, and they're pleased that you're here. And they are happy that you accepted the invitation to pray for them, and then to party with them. God bless you. We have a great ride to make a little, a little, a little Michigan allergy attack here. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, an opportunity for us to say God bless you. Isn't that great? In the chapel, that God blesses the person who's sneezing, and God blesses the bride of the groom as well. As I say, they're happy that they can see you and that you're here to celebrate with them. Many of us will have the opportunity over the several hours to come to congratulate them, to wish them all the best. Maybe those married couples who have been married for a good number of years might have words of wisdom and advice to share with Alex and Hannah. And you should give them words of wisdom and advice. You may even have a small gift or a present for them. Although you're not looking for any gifts of presents, are you? No. No. It's not good to lie. It's not good to lie to a priest. In the presence of a chapel with yeah, your friends right and family right. and made a guest here. If someone were to give you a gift, would you accept it? I, Absolutely. I guess so. The most honest thing hey. you ever had. Watch me. I try to avoid the veil because I don't want her coming back out again. Is that going to bother you? It is going to bother me. Yes, I just knew it. I just knew it. I once had to almost fell off the sanctuary because I accidentally stepped on that very thin veil material. It's like walking on ice. So I would, I would prefer that it not be out where they can walk on it. Uh, but again, weddings are gift giving occasions. We give gifts often in life. We give gifts on birthdays, in anniversaries, in weddings. In graduations, we give gifts at Christmas. We give gifts at Mother's Day and Father's Day. Sometimes we give gifts for no special occasion. Sometimes we just are out shopping and we find something that is just perfect for a loved one or friend and we purchase it. And I learned a long time ago, if you find something for an individual that you think is just perfect, you need to get that to them immediately. Because I used to put it away in my house and say, I'll give it to them at Christmas. And then December 24th and 25th came around, and I didn't remember where I put it. And so it was a waste of my time and my effort. But gift giving is the way that we as human beings try to make real. Something that we feel 
deep in our heart for the individual who's going to be the recipient of our, of our generosity. Sometimes the gifts are silly. Sometimes the gifts are significant. Sometimes the gifts are practical. Sometimes the gifts are handmade or home-baked. But when we give a gift to another person, we want that other person to know that they are special to us. And on a wedding day, we give gifts to the bride and groom with our best wishes that they would have a lifetime of happiness and peace. And so I want to give a gift to you too. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I think it wrapped again, but before you open it, before yeah. I open it, I want to tell you something. You know, it's not the size of the gift that matters. It's not the cost of the gift that matters. It's what the gift represents. Right. Yes. yes. Let me repeat that. It's not the size, yes. it's yes. not the cost of what the gift represents. Yes. Not even take out Go a ahead. canister if you'd like. And it's really not wrapped, it's just in, in tissue paper. And it's, it's a canister that has a lid that's kind of pried open. If you just got the top of it, this comes right off. Have you ever seen anything quite as lovely as that? <laughs> oh my God, it's a Waterford canister that says a little gift that you can use. <clears throat> but it's absolutely awful and empty because that little bowl, it's called the Alana Feynman's bowl, is currently at my house. Yeah. And it's on my coffee table. And it's filled with red, white, and blue M&Ms because I haven't eaten them all from the 4th of July. <laughs> but they'll be gone by the end of this month. So now I have a question to ask the two of you. Why do you think the priest, who is witnessing your marriage, would give you a worthless, empty canister? So we can fill it. Yeah, right here. No, outside. Don't even, don't even go there. <laughs> you know, I'm giving you this worthless, empty canister because I'm cheap. <laughs> Why yeah, not? Right, yeah. We're supposed to recycle this kind of stuff. So I keep the bowl, I keep the candy, you get the canister, and the bag and the tissue. What a deal. Love it. But the canister really represents married life. And now everyone in the chapel is saying that priest is nuts. <laughs> Actually, the priest is nuts. But... The canister represents great life because, believe it or not, marriage is like this canister. Marriage is empty. There's no love in marriage. You have love in your heart for each other. There's no joy in marriage. But you have the ability to bring joy and happiness to each other. There's no forgiveness in marriage. There may be times and occasions we hope for a few and far between when you might be disappointed or hurt. And you need to talk through why you were disappointed, why you were hurt. And the other needs to listen attentively so that they can learn from that experience. And then you have to say those words that are oftentimes very, very hard. I'm sorry. And the words that, re that respond to that apology are sometimes also hard to say. I forgive you. But you know what? You have to forgive each other. And you learn from those experiences, and you say, you know what? I know I love you more than this little thing that caused me some to be upset. So let's learn from this experience. Let's move, it, move beyond this time. Let's move forward together. So actually, even though it's worthless and empty, it's a challenge. And the challenge is, I want you to accept this empty canister with the understanding that it's up to you not to have your marriage become like this canister. Worthless, empty, disposable. I want your love and your marriage to be like that bowl of crystal on my coffee table. Beautiful, precious, and filled with sweet things. Yeah. Are you ready to go through with this? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay, let me put the, uh, the, bag, uh, the, the canister back in the bag. Right. Thank you. And make your way slowly up to the top of the stairs, and we will have the whole wedding party come out and join us in the sanctuary.
appreciate you all to stand, and I'd also encourage Charlie Roberto to come forward. She's going to lead us in a short series of invocations.
we make this prayer that through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you all to stand. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Our final blessing has three four invocations to it. And at the end of each invocation, you can respond in faith. Amen. May God, our Almighty Father, give you joy and bless you today and always. Amen. May Jesus, the Son of God, have mercy on you and help you in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always fill your hearts with love. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. It gives me a great deal of pride and pleasure at this point to officially welcome and introduce to you our new bride groom, Mr. and Mrs. Alex and Hannah Malia, and they can exchange a kiss. Thanks be to God.